A long time ago, when EV expansion on the Ukrainian market was only planned, the question arose – how and where will the drivers charge to this miracle transport? Options were limited, so, of course, Chinese chargers entered the market. Which isn't surprising, considering that they are leaders in the industrial production. And so, one of the ways to build the Ukrainian charging infrastructure were the products of the Chinese company Setec. The company is rather large, and they make various electrical products since 2004. Setec factory is located in Guangzhou and its products are known far beyond the Celestial Empire and, first of all, due to the affordable price. We purchased shell demo socketed stations with a capacity of 20, 40 and 50 kW in several modifications. But after we integrated them to the network, pretty big problems arose. Power supply units and controllers failed and the software was incompatible with most vehicles. When Auto Enterprise engineers dwelled deeply into the design of the stations, they found very interesting problems that perfectly characterize the Chinese approach to the tech manufacturing. Everything should be as cheap as possible. The strangest thing was the control module. As a controller, it uses a board designed for home development by school and college students. Now, analogous for it cost about 50 bucks at the AliExpress. Also, it seems that the software was also developed by the students. It was the starting point for Auto Enterprise engineers. The software was completely rewritten from scratch and after it was changed they had to improve the control module circuitry because the hardware problems didn't go away. Even the GSM modem was implemented in it so that the station could be connected to the billing and remote control services. But the proper level of reliability wasn't reached. The faults and errors refused to disappear. The control module was only the tip of the iceberg. Most problems were found in power modules. Stations broke down while in use and sometimes literally burned down. The various elements burned up completely spontaneously. They were replaced, the modules were returned into the station, but after a while they burned again. What problems did we have? A bunch of different ones. And we reviewed everything. There were so many parts and they just randomly burned down. There were another issue, an issue with the build itself. Satek put a pre-made solution inside this aluminium case. And what happened? Well, they covered it with metal covers and added a metal partition to the back. And what happens next? We remove this partition, these covers, cut them out so that they do not touch anything and imagine a heat-blowing heater that you used to blow these metal parts with. They heat up immediately. The metal heats up and, of course, it warms up this aluminium body. This is the part where the most heated parts are in. So the case heats up, the aluminum starts to warm up, the fan fails, the maximum ventilation mode is turned down. But the biggest surprise we found and solved together in a complex brainstorming session with our engineers. The biggest surprise is that this fan has some kind of emergency mode, which consumes an unbelievable amount of energy. But the tech seemed to have been lazy, so what did they do? They took the power supply unit that was supposed to power the fans and made it so that it only powers the board that connects them and creates a network connection. The maximum operating mode is enabled and a power connector that controls the power supply does not work. The computer does not have enough power because it's taken down by the fan. The mistake was that they connected it to the power supply without tests and understanding that at a maximum temperature the emergency mode would start. We couldn't find it during the tests because we were not testing it under the critical conditions all the time. So that's how power goes down. And imagine that you don't control the power section anymore. The result is simple. The components explode and that's it. In order to get rid of those problems, the Auto Enterprise engineers had to completely redesign the power module housing. The rear cover, which was slowing down the airflow, was removed from the hole at all. The top cover had to be cut for better heat dispersion, and the back of the power module itself had to be removed. This made the charging station more or less functional. However, this made the charging station more or less functional. However, we had to restructure the station. We changed the controller, changed the software and firmware. All the software here was terrible. 
it generated errors all the time. We also had to add a special software to understand what the error was and perform diagnostics on the modules. With the update, it became possible that even if one module failed, the charging station would still be charging the vehicle. In the original CTEC version, if one of the modules fell out of the circuit, the entire station stopped working with it. But even after all the changes, the CTEC unit suffers from too many drawbacks. Power module design is extremely faulty, its efficiency is low and the losses are too high, up to 20%. This is despite the fact that losses at the competitor stations, which are also hardly the best, do not exceed 10%. So each kilowatt received from such a station is more expensive for the client than on more sophisticated charges. Another problem with CETEC stations is that they do not generate the power correctly. But why? You can't figure it out anymore. Over time, charging is getting slower and slower. You can install 7 of these modules and give 125 amperes. But they will do not give out the power correctly and the car will reserve it. Only 80 amperes will be used on average. Alas, this is not the only problem. At some point, users of CETEC charging stations started complaining about the impossibility of vehicle charging even when a system is fully operational. However, that was the exclusive complaint of Tesla drivers. It turned out that CETEC stations had absolutely no protection against interference in the power part. In Tesla's, data exchange between a machine and charging goes exactly through the power wiring. And in the presence of high-frequency interference, the vehicle simply does not see the response from the station. Therefore, charging is interrupted. Alta Enterprise has sorted it out by integrating high-frequency filters in a power unit. But the struggle goes on. We support the warranty because we need to maintain our reputation, but CETEC does not pay for warranty service. Even if you send the stations to China, they'll try to repair them, return them to you, but everything breaks down again, and the only thing you'll be left with at the end is only constant shipping costs. Because it cannot be completely repaired. This is… this product is… Stillborn. Too many defects. Too much. If someone have spent money on them, bought them, they of course want to repair it. The only option is to completely rebuild the station, but it will be very expensive. Today it is much easier to buy stations of a new generation and not to buy any CETEC products. Because this product only causes sadness. All its components cause sadness. The controller and the connector are absolutely horrible. The wires inside are twisted. The communication wires are interrupted. The connector has a locking button that falls off, the station freezes and the water gets inside and washes out the lubricant. Simply put, it's terrible. The monitor stops working, the station overheats and the loss of capacity is huge. Now, we support the stations. We dismantle, reconstruct, offer favorable conditions so that the clients could replace it to, to our stations, because it is unprofitable to maintain the stations absolutely. Auto Enterprise has spent more than a million dollars repairing static charging stations. From our experience, we do not advise owners of these stations to try to revive them and achieve full and normal operation, it is practically impossible. Yet, you can purchase a state-of-the-art charging station designed by Auto Enterprise engineers to meet the needs of today's electric vehicle owners, that is built based on our experience in servicing various types of charges.